Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. And in this video, I'm going to share a little workflow that I have in Topaz Studio 2 uh, using um, a couple of filters I don't use a whole lot and something that I found kind of interesting. So let me just jump into it. Here's the photo. Now this is a, a waterfall I took in Canada a couple of years ago. That's the before and that's the after. And there are a couple of things I did I wanted to share with you. So let me reset these filters and then we'll walk through it. Okay, so here's the first filter, which is Precision Contrast, one of my favorites. And as you can see, the before and the after, Precision Contrast is really just like, uh, I don't know, it may be my favorite filter. I love all the art filters in Topaz Studio, but Precision Contrast, I use it, I start out with it, honestly, on like on every photo. It's just that powerful. And as you can see, I mean, it does such a great job. There's the before and the after. Uh, yeah, obviously, it, it impacts contrast, but when you impact contrast, it also impacts uh, the look of the color in the photo. So the before and the after looks like I did a little bit of color work, but I didn't. Um, so actually, you know what? That's not entirely true. I forgot. I often don't do color work um, in this filter, but I did this time. So sorry about that. I got a little um, forgetful there. So I did uh, impact contrast in all four areas, micro, low, medium, and high. And again, every time it's just a little bit of a experiment. Um, I just move them around until I get them looking the way I wanted. I did take highlights down, and then in this case, as I said a moment ago, I did increase saturation and vibrance a little bit, so it does bring that up a little bit, uh, but still, even not having done that, every time you change contrast, it does impact the look of color, so keep that in mind. Um, next, and this is something I thought was really helpful, and that was I used dehaze. Now, dehaze is not a filter that you normally think of for like running water. Um, Dehaze is primarily talked about for foggy or cloudy skies because it helps you sort of cut through that atmospheric haze and create a little bit crisper photo that's, you know, richer colors and that sort of thing. But I actually found that it worked really well here on this running water. And if you think about it, this long exposure running water, there's a lot of white and a lot of highlights. So it kind of mimics what a, a cloudy sky would look like or a foggy sky. And so I thought, you know, maybe I'll just try dehaze. And as you can see, here's the before and here's the after. Um, I thought it did a really good job of cutting through some of the, you know, we'll call it haze in the water and give me a little bit punchier color. So one more time, there's before and there's after with dehaze. So consider that when you're working with, um, you know, like some running water or something where there are a number of uh, you know, bits of highlights in the water, you may want to try the dehaze filter because it worked, I thought, quite well in this one. Uh, next was precision detail. Uh, and here I just bumped up the medium details and I think that was it. And then as you can see, I did a little bit of masking. Um, and if you recall, black conceals and white reveals. So in other words, I basically applied it and then I erased it from the water because I didn't want to bring up detail in the water. I like the, the look of that flow there. Uh, but I did want to bring up detail in the surrounding areas because these rocks, uh, let me show you the before. That's the entire before. Let me just do this filter. Um, if you look at the rocks here on the right hand side and in the left foreground and in the background, you know, I, I like the, that the rocks have a little bit of detail to them, but I wanted to amp that a little bit. So I did. Uh, and that was how I did it. Um, and then uh, while I was in that mask, um, after I finished, you just go to these little buttons and you can say copy. Uh, and then you can take that mask and basically copy it onto another filter, which is exactly what I did. So I came over here, I'm sorry, uh, and I clicked these buttons and I said paste. Uh, so I basically duplica duplicated the mask from the precision detail layer and copied it exactly onto brightness and contrast. And then what I did is I lowered the exposure or took down the brightness um, in those surrounding areas. So I made them more detailed in the previous filter and then I darkened them in this filter. And so the before and after of that filter, you can see the surrounding areas are a little bit brighter and now they're a little bit darker and that was just copying the mask. I didn't want to touch the water in that case. Okay, next was HSL color tuning. So you can see what I did there. There's the before and the after. It's fairly subtle, but I did do a little bit of color work. Um, you can see the different uh, filters, or excuse me, the colors that I did adjust uh, here in orange. The great thing about HSL in studio is that when you hover over one of these um, colors uh, squares here in the filter, it will show you with these red hash marks where that color is in the photo. And thus it's gonna imply, hey, this is where you're gonna see the enhancements that you're about to make. 
because what you can do below is the hue, saturation, and lightness or luminance um, of that color. So I went into orange, and as you can see, I bumped up the saturation just a little bit. Um, and then I went into this kind of teal, kind of aqua color. And I also bumped up the saturation. That was for the water, if you see. It's mostly impacting the water. And then I did the same thing in the blue, just bumped up that saturation a little bit. You can also tell the white lines underneath these squares show you which ones have had uh, uh, adjustments made to them. So that was what I did there. And that was really, HSL for me was really just to bump up a little bit of color in the photo. So one more time, there's the before and the after. It's kind of subtle. You can probably see it most in the water, but I love the blue water. And I wanted to amp that up a little bit, but I also wanted to bring a little bit of that orange back, which to me is like sunlight coming in from out of frame, and it's kind of hitting that uh, rock wall there. So that was what I did there. Um, next was a vignette. So pretty simple. I was, I was actually done with the photo, and I was like, well, I'm going to tighten the focus a little bit on the center of the photo because really all I care about, not all, but you know what I primarily care about is the flow of the water. So coming from that area you know, where it starts, right up here, kind of out of frame, kind of up and central, and then it kind of loops down and kind of makes this L shape uh, or V shape on its side, whatever shape. Um, you can, you know what I'm talking about, but I wanted to accentuate the, the focus a little bit, and that's what a vignette does. It helps you sort of concentrate the focus, because here I'm looking a little bit more at everything, and with the vignette, I'm more inclined to just kind of dive into the water itself. And honestly, I was done until I started to record this video, and then I thought, you know, I kind of want to brighten the water a little bit. So I went back to one of these masks, did a copy, and then I came over here and I did a paste. Um, and then I did an invert. And so you can see my uh, mask is just an inverted version of the mask down below. And what I did is I just increased the brightness a little bit of the water. So before the mask had been impacting everything but the water, because I copied and inverted it, now it's only gonna impact the water. So I increased the brightness uh, or the exposure value of the water. So I just made it a little bit brighter. So there's the before and the after. And that was really it. And that was how I went from the original, uh, a little bit washed out. It's a, it's, you know, it's a brighter photo overall, partly because it's a longer exposure. Um, and after, higher contrast, higher color. And I thought the dehaze usage on the, the water itself, let me show you the impact of dehaze. There's before the dehaze, and that's after dehaze. You can see a little bit darker and um, a little bit crisper in terms of the water and that sort of thing. And I just thought it, uh, it was a nice little touch to make the photo go from the original, which is that, to the final, which is that. And that's how it works, my friends. I hope you found this workflow video helpful. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, that sort of thing. And don't hesitate to leave me any comments or feedback. Always lo love hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.